You're watching Seatome TV. Knowledge is power. So PET CT really is a, a great innovation in cancer. It's really the only scan that can detect cancers and tell you that something is a cancer. Um, the way PET CT works is they inject a radioactive isotope that's attached to a sugar. Now there's uh, been a lot of development in PET CTs. So there's many different radioactive um, um, uh, targets and different isotopes are being used. But the specific one, the um, FDG, is a sugar attached to a radioactive isotope they inject it into you. And because cancer cells are constantly growing and are highly metabolically active, they will take up a lot more of this radioactive sugar solution than the surrounding area. So the important thing with PET-CT is it tells you whether a lump that is seen on imaging is actually active and growing fast or not. And so that's important because it can tell you whether it's a benign lump or an actual tumor. And you wanna know that. It also tells you how aggressive the tumor is, if it is a tumor, um, by the amount of the sugar that it drinks up. And that's referred to as the SUV, the serum uptake value. And the more of that, uh, more, the more of this radioactive isotope uh, and sugar that the tumor drinks up, the more aggressive it is and the more likely it is to metastasize and grow. So we've seen patients um, told that they are cancer free and a PET CT scan shows that those lumps um, are actually cancerous. And we've also seen patients who were treated and in their fifth and sixth round of chemo who never had cancer in the first place because um, the oncologists uh, were, were targeting a, um, a benign lump that they thought was a tumor. So PET CT is really important for anyone with cancer um, and very important. And it's a real time identification of cancer. Whereas if you're using a CT scan or any of the other scans, because they just give you the shape and the size of the, of the lump, um, doc, what doctors typically do is they'll take one CT scan or an X-ray scan or, or some sort of MRI scan. They'll um, measure the size of the lumps and then uh, they'll do it again, you know, four or five, six months later and use that size change to determine whether you know it's cancerous or not which is a really terrible way of determining if something's cancerous because they're basically using you as a living petri dish um and you know you you don't want to be having something growing inside of you like that uh, and you don't want to be waiting that long when you can find out right away if something's cancerous or not with with one simple scan so really pet ct uh is very important mm -hmm. Um, I just want to draw people's attention to this little yeah. statistic I added at the bottom here. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my, Alex is the, the research scientist cancer expert. My background is in uh, counseling and, um, and creating educational courses and materials that help, you know, get challenging information to make a little more sense. And uh, as part of this journey, this last uh, 11 years working with Alex in the field of cancer care, I've done a lot of research, learned a lot of things. Uh, and one of the things that I came across actually in, in preparing for this series of webinars um, was a study from 2016 from the World Health Organization. That is the most current data we have from a, from a global perspective. It's not a, a, an annual thing. Um, but because Canada specifically has r resisted the use of PET CT and and we'll say proper for want of a better term, genetic testing, like more thorough genetic testing, we are listed out of 28 countries that have public health care programs as 23, 23rd. That's like 20, that's not at the top, that's the bottom, for the way that we diagnose and monitor cancer. Mm. Yeah. And so, so Michelle, um, do you have an idea of how many PET CT machines are in Canada? Uh, right now in Canada, the, uh, well, in the public health care system, there are about 35. And okay. they're predominantly used uh, for anything but cancer, actually. Yeah. Uh, heart, monitoring heart problems, things like that. Um, the U.S., uh, in contrast, has thousands of PET CT 
machines. Yeah, I mean they're they're up in the seven seven thousand range, aren't they? Uh, no, it's more like thirty five hundred. But okay. they use them as part of standard diagnostics, as do countries like the UK and Germany and Australia right. and well twenty two others, pretty much, mm. um, uh, um, uh, that were surveyed. So, um, all this is to say. In this one piece alone, just starting with proper diagnostics, we, we're already seeing a great difference in what can be accomplished with more precise imaging uh, than what is used in standard care. So I just want to... I do remember that, um, that red note that you said, um, PET-CT leads oncologists to modify their treatment plans 80% 80 of the time. Now, I remember that um, because I believe it was BC Cancer that posted that when they were building their second PET CT machine. Yes. Um, they posted that in the Vancouver Sun. Yeah. Um, and they said, you know, when a patient gets a, gets a private PET CT, um, it changes their treatment. In it was actually 87% or 87.5% of the time, which mm -hmm. is really incredible. So in other words, they're only getting it right 13% of the time. That's right. You know, so PET CT, most important thing if you have a cancer diagnosis. Yes. And may I say, everything we recommend, I mean, we do offer some testing here, but we're we're not, uh, we don't get kickbacks. This is unbiased information. <laughs> I just want you to know that um, we're, we don't run a PET CT facility. Uh, <laughs> we really want you to get the very best possible care. And of course, that starts with making sure your diagnosis is as thorough and accurate as possible. So... Thank you for watching Seatome TV. Subscribe below and stay informed.